Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Derek Bird, here at StopStrugglingNow.com. And today, it's all about assets. It's all about getting assets. Is art an asset? I've talked about it before, but today is a special event. Because we only had a thousand or two subscribers back in the day when we had an artist, Eric Franklin, on when I was in the Philippines. I'm going to show parts of that, and we're going to talk about art and accumulating some art so you have additional assets besides real estate's an asset, stocks, asset. So, of course, we're talking about assets today. And welcome. Stop struggling now. Gear. Check. And please, like. Subscribe and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. Now, let's get to it. All right, welcome back. And today I have a special treat for you simply because I'm going to show video of when I was in the Philippines last year, and since we're talking about creating wealth and talking about an asset class such as art, I was with Eric Franklin, and we did an interview, but we had maybe 1,000, 1,500 subscribers at the time, so uh, now that we have a lot more, I'll reprise part of that interview, uh, part of that discussion, but first, I want to say that we're at the Stop Struggling Now YouTube channel. And if you still haven't became a member, please join over here. And without further ado, I will get into Eric Franklin. His website is here, and it's Don's Eyes Photography dot Squarespace dot com. It's a little provocative. So the thing is, you will also notice when you log in that you will not see any prices. He only does a limited amount of pieces, and so you have to email him if you love any of his artwork. So I will roll part of the video. It was longer than what I'm going to show here, but you'll see our discussion because we're going to be talking about uh, penny stocks even, and we talk a little bit about art. But in case anybody wants to know, today... If you watch this video, you will notice that the Dow Jones and all the index, all the funds, NASDAQ, Standard & Poor, uh, pre-market, they're a little in the positive. Um, just a little bit. I mean, less than 1%. So uh, you can almost, at, if it started right now, if the stock market was going to open, this is part of creating wealth. But again, in at another asset class, that we're going to talk about today is artwork so without further ado i'll show you our previous video and then i'll come back and we'll talk about some actual art pieces um, and today you're not going to believe this as some of you know i'm over here in cebu and i'm here with a guest an artist and his father's famous but i ain't going to go there with that <laughs> this is eric franklin you got to check out some of his artwork it's at don's eyes photography.com i'll have a link down below so we're going to talk about a few things, especially artists. And we're going to talk about art. Some of y'all are sleeping. You know you can invest in art. DonEyesPhotography.com. I'm just going to say this man is extraordinary. We've been talking for about an hour or two. And come to find out, he's like a kin to what I'm talking about. This man has, wait, I'll just let you say management and business give, give him the degree thing <laughs> first hold on okay, hold on he's, um, he's legit and he's an artist um education wise you know um a couple a couple of degrees um business uh, master in business master's in quality system management um oh my god you know it's, they're just they're just tools all right you know, tools to move forward that's all they are okay so that's just a preview of the eric franklin and what we're going to talk about is sometimes when I'm walking through the house, when I used to walk through the house and I'd be talking, you uh, may have noticed background images. 
and one of those images has been uh, Michael Jordan and a lot of people take Jordan and the Jordan brand for granted unless it's sneakers but what you may not know is when he first came out with a poster such as wings that poster originally was something uh, I can't remember the cost four or five hundred bucks maybe something like that there was another one that is even more rare than the wings poster is actually a 3d where he's holding an actual ball and the ball is at half of the ball actually sticks out of the poster that one is highly valuable but I'm gonna show you something right here and as you can see you can see the Michael Jordan wings signed the upper deck he had a couple of different kinds he had an upper deck and that's the reason why the upper deck had a hologram and you can see where it's eleven thousand that's why there's a variable here on price and size so see here's the 76 inch one and it's not even framed it doesn't look like so that's 49.95 and I'll show you real quick the one that I have is the 76 inch version and some of you may have noticed it in my previous videos and who knew that the price would be this high 15 20 years 20 what 20 years 25 years later something like that so this gives you an idea that artwork is actually part of being wealthy all right so as you can see on the screen I'll flip it to I'll, I'll put an image up of the one in the in my house so let's move along to other things too because a lot of people get a little bit confused about art because there's people in your area right now who has artwork and of course not everybody can be a superstar but there are some people that you may just like their artwork and then you just buy it and it could be twenty five dollars it could be fifty dollars it could be a hundred dollars you're not thinking anything of it and just to give you a little proof I'm gonna move along to some other artwork so not you can pick whatever art you want but I'm here at ENS gallery and they feature some artists that people have not heard of but yet look at some of these prices that they're getting for the art Elizabeth Catlett 7700 she has passed away 7500 I mean Ernie Barnes is another person people may not know about when if you are familiar with the show Good Times the character JJ he actually didn't have anything to do he was always walking around they didn't really have any extracurricular situation for him so they turned him into an artist artiste I think is how he used to say it the pictures were actually the, the the paintings that they showed was actually done by Ernie Barnes Ernie Barnes is a icon but you would not know it because you see a lithograph here for five hundred and ten dollars okay he did the 1984 Olympics and this is a lithograph and he probably signed it so we're talking about five hundred and ten dollars it's not an actual oil painting and a canvas but again if you're looking for artwork that actually has some meaning behind it and also may have some future value again it's an asset wealthy people do have paintings as assets this is five hundred and ten dollars he has other paintings of course that are going to be a lot more than that but this is just the Olympic ones for the Los Angeles Olympics 1984 I'll show you someone else named William uh, Tolliver and who knew his paintings 10,000 13,000 3,800 William Tolliver is another person another artist and who knew that you could have bought his paintings for a couple of thousand dollars and then later on there were 10,000 13,000 so you just never know but you do know if a person is a is a known artist and if you know they're a known artist pretty early you can get some of their artwork 
And I'll give you an example of known artists where people were given the buzzword and we're talking about them. So we'll talk about an artist in a minute. But I'm going to move along to Paul Goodnight. And Paul Goodnight may not be known, but he's still alive. And he, you can get art from this man right now. And as you can see here, his images appeared in television and film since 1984. Background images, Seinfeld, Cosby Show, Jackie Brown, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Uglies. They're talking about all these publications, Ar Ar Architectural Digest, People Magazine, Ebony, Essence. He's all over the place. And, and people have collected his artwork. He's alive right now in the Northeast. You could get some actual art from this man and you could see here I'm on overduerecognition.com and you can see here where they're selling some artwork he has limited edition serigraphs they're 20 they're basically two thousand dollars and what a serigraph is is like a screen print so it's not an actual canvas print so anything that this man might have you might be able to get and at a very good value right now heaven forbid if you were able to get an actual canvas oil painting from him and I don't know how much that would cost but I'm just giving you the name of a couple of people who if you wanted to pass on some items and in today's money you might say hey $850 that's worth it or may not be worth it to you you might like the painting you so if you like something then why wouldn't you get it and then, of course, the value is always subjective, but let's just put it plain and simple. If you have something that can be authenticated, signed, you, you follow what I'm saying, signed, dated, uh, picture with the person signing it, and then later on, it increases in value that way. So just think of art as a way of wealth. Now, I'm going to get into, and, and look at here. This is 1800. Again, these are screen prints is what a serigraph is. Um, limited edition here, 3200. Basically, uh, just like you screen print a t-shirt and you paint in a screen, that's what basically this is. It's not the actual oil, but as you can see, prices are pretty hefty. And again, like I said, the man is still alive. So you could actually get, like here, original on paper, 2000 somebody's selling this for twenty four hundred dollars you if you so this is all i'm trying to say is you could be at somebody's estate sale somebody's uh home or at an auction and you could see a painting like this and everybody in the room just ignores it they're just sitting there like okay whatever and you sit there and you bid four hundred dollars i'm sure the auction house knows what it's worth and People are sitting there going, why is this guy bidding four or $500 for this painting? And you're sitting there smiling inside going, man, these people don't know who this person is. Uh, I'll take it. And a lot of people have found valuable pieces of art simply because they know who the artists are. And just like anything in life, you have to study and it has to be along your genre. And so therefore, if you know this, it makes it a lot easier as a, from an entrepreneur standpoint. The Jordan poster uh, that I got was because I was at an auction, get this, for uh, restaurant equipment in, in Florida. And the auction was in a warehouse that sold restaurant equipment, sold other items for places that were going out of business. Well... This sports paraphernalia place went out of business. And here is the Jordan signed poster just sitting there on the floor. The guy, the auction house, the auction is for restaurant equipment. The guy says, well, okay, no, since this is here, we might as well just open up the floor for any sports paraphernalia. Does anybody see anything here that you might want to start the auction bidding on? So I just waited until finally nobody said that they wanted any of the items. Nobody said this, this, this Jordan poster. 
Now, I knew the Jordan poster was worth something. I just didn't know how much it was worth, but I doggone knew it was worth 50 bucks, right? Or 100 bucks for that matter, or 150 bucks. I knew it was worth more than that. So in my head, I go, okay, we can go up to 150 bucks, 200 bucks, no big deal. So I looked at it. It's definitely signed, definitely Nike, definitely everything. And I'm like, oh my God, let me see what's going on. So I bid. Fifty dollars. Nobody bid anything else, so they sold me this for fifty dollars. So this is just giving you an idea what can happen when you are privy and you have knowledge. Knowledge is power. And I'm ranting about a, going longer than I wanted to go, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of look. If you know artwork and you could actually see this in the open market, you could see this at auction houses and people don't know what it is half of the time if it's an obscure and it's not really an art auction or if it's in a small town or you just never know what's going to happen. So, again, here's Ernie Barnes. Kind of looks like a good, little Good Times poster on the wall uh, from the TV show. Look at this. The Gospel Truth on eBay. Somebody's trying to sell this for $18,500. Ernie Barnes closed set. Somebody's on eBay trying to sell this for $24,000. This just gives you an idea of what you can do. Now, again, when we're in the house, sometimes you've seen paintings as I walk by. Here goes one right here. This is a man named Thomas Kincaid. He's out of Placerville, California. And in the early, like, late 80s, there was this buzz about this guy, this artist of light kind of guy. So he's up the street and from Sacramento up the street, about 40 miles north, 30 miles north, whatever. Anyhow, this guy is painter of light. People have heard of him, but he's a local kind of famous guy. Roll down there. Some of his paintings are $400, $500. The bigger painting, like this right here, uh, was somewhere like a thousand. It, it, I can't really remember. $875, $900, 1200 something of that nature for the old canvas. And it's at the uh, studio. So. It's just the original limited edition. He does it. And as you can see here, this right here, it looks like it's the canvas print. It's a limited edition. 1178 out of 3950. Well, I actually have one. This particular one that I'll show a picture on my wall is actually one of the first like 20. I got to look at the authentication uh, certificates. But it's like one of the first 20. So here's an example of this same painting. 3500 is the asking price. Who knows what it'll sell for. But this just gives you an idea. And I'll keep it moving. Because as you can see here, now there's a difference. See, this is more. And once again, there's a reason why it's more. It's because it's not like the other one where it's this 1178 out of 3950 it's the other one where you're in the first like 10 first 15 first 10 it's something that i just can't remember i got to pull out the certificates but there's a big difference so now you see somebody's trying to sell this other one for nine thousand, and a huge difference in pricing and he has passed away now he passed away i i, I don't remember maybe 10 years ago um so that gives you an idea, and I'll show you the, again, painting on the wall, and I'll keep moving because I have some other things. Oh, vanguards. I don't have any other Kincaids. So what I'll do is I'll, sh I'll do it uh, this way. Why don't we go to uh, Foothill, oh, there we go, Foothill Autumn Mill, and... I'm almost going to be done here. It looks like I can't get to the Foothill Autumn Mill. But, um, oh, there we go. Let's see what we got here for the shopping part. 
again, what he did was he kind of sold his soul because he started doing licensing deals, started having other people, a group of people that was like his students, and then they would kind of make additional paintings, and then he would start doing this, uh, like you saw here, 1137 out of 3950. He started doing all these little different kind of things, and he started also every Christmas time in Placerville, he would come up with something new, but they would be basically lithographs. And he would sell these lithographs for like $75 and they're limited edition. And he would always sign it. And that's what he would do for the Placerville community, always in Placerville. So I have lithographs from him that are actually signed as well. And I don't know the value of any of this, but since it was only $75 each, and it was a guy at this time, it was five years later, and he's a well-known person, I was like, well, I might as well get it, see what happens. So I can't go any further into any of these because my computer's not acting, cooperating. But uh, Foothill Autumn Mill, uh, you have uh, uh, Promise, Promise of the Bridge 3, things like that and I'll show some of the paintings in this video so now I'm gonna get back to Eric Franklin and our discussion about penny stocks and then I'll just run it out till the end with the Eric Franklin uh, interview and that will pretty much be it so I wanna say thank you for watching thank you for listening and remember pay attention to artwork this is an easy way that you can educate yourself for free and then while you're walking around or looking online for art or in, for that matter on eBay or Craigslist or wherever, Etsy, you just have to pay attention because there's different ways that art is printed up. Some are just lithographs, some are just um, screen printed, some are other artists are commission to make it look like that artist so you have to make sure you know what you're getting when it comes to art and and just like when we're talking about baseball cards uh, basketball cards all this that and the other same kind of thing because there's always bad apples uh, out there trying to scam people so you have to keep that in mind so that's why you always want it to be authenticated you want to have some sort of trail where you can actually prove that it's authentic uh, you, that's the best way to do when you're talking about art or you have to buy from a dealer or a person that's a reputable uh, persons so anyhow let's get back to the Eric Franklin piece again part of the uh, interview from Cebu in the Philippines and uh, thank you again for watching and how awesome is this like I always said sometimes you never know who you're gonna meet what opportunities show up things that might influence your mind. And here's this man that shows up. He's like a kin to the Stop Struggling Now type of thinking. So anyhow, there's some things that we've been talking about over the last day or two that you'd be shocked about. Remember those times I've been telling you about investing stocks, bonds, some things that keeps earning you money while you're sleeping? Well, this man comes over here and starts talking to me about penny stocks. but. Hold on, can we talk about it? We can talk about penny stocks. I'm not, All right. I'm not a guru on penny stocks, but I would tell you this. Um, they, are, they, they, they can make you money and you can lose money. The best way to understand penny stocks is to educate yourself on them. Um, really educate yourself. Don't listen to people uh, who's trying to sell you on stuff. Um, education, that's the best thing I can say. Education is, is the best way to move forward. If you want to learn how to build a table, read about it. Watch someone, talk to someone, educate yourself on building a table, then build a table. Just don't go out there and buy all the stuff and try to build a table. You know, you, you, chances are you're not going to succeed and you're going to give up and you're going to lose money. You know, um, there's, right. there's, there's enough information out there on, on the stock market, um, especially with the internet today. It, it, join up with a group. I'm not going to tell you which group, but just join up you know, with a group and take a couple hundred dollars and, and learn how to, to manage an account and then move from there. That's right. Um, it, there's, 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 read news, um, understand the news, understand, you know, what's going on in the world. And once you start understanding all those things, 
then you can make uh, really good decisions on penny stocks. And um, the worst thing you can do is think you can go in there and become a millionaire overnight. Ain't gonna happen. Not gonna happen. You know, you, you gotta work it. You gotta, you really have to work it. You have to, it becomes a second job. That's right. Okay, but if you do it right, you can go from penny stocks to the big boys. You know, and and, and, and that's how you that's how you succeed. And that's, that's how you right. succeed with anything. And how many times have we done talked to y'all about this? How many times have I told you? Not one month, not two months, not six months, not a year. You better be putting in the work. It's gonna be past the three year mark before you start thinking you're successful. So that just means you put in the work. So anyhow. We got some other superstars in the house. We'll get to them later, which is unbelievable. But all right, what's the what's the website? Can we buy art there? You can buy art there. The best way to do it is contact me directly, um, because uh, to be honest, um, my work I, I I don't like to put a price on my work because art shouldn't have a price, but it does because I need to keep creating, so it costs. True but artists. um true artists. But uh you know, you, my my email's address on there, you can contact me directly. Um I my work is very limited. Um I don't believe in mass production. I only make one of I only make ten of every piece and they're certified and um they they you won't see anybody else with them, pretty much. I can vouch for no, it. No T shirts, no posters, no Eight by tens. Um, you get what you get, and no one else. Will, no one else will. That's right. I can vouch. He has some unique art twist. It's unbelievable. Hey, might as well buy some. And by the way, art can be an asset. All right, you've heard me talk about it before. There's plenty of asset classes. Art's one of them. Well, hopefully you like that short discussion with Eric Franklin. And I repeat, go over to Don's Eyes Photography dot Squarespace dot com and look through some of his artwork and maybe you'll like something where that you might want to purchase. And remember you gotta email him for a price because he's an artist. Don't wanna be like a Picasso or any of the previous artists who died poor, right? So anyhow, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please like, subscribe, and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. And you know it's hard out here. That's why the accumulation can be different. Accumulation of wealth can be different for everybody. Whether it's artwork, whether it's stocks, whether it's bonds, whether it's just plain old cash, whether it's streams of income, whether it's real estate, there's always many different assets that are available and is gold silver assets is cryptocurrency like a bitcoin an asset some will say yes but as you know a video i did with yankee stacking he said gold and silver is insurance so it all depends on how you look at things but assets are abundantly available and usually the less money you have coming in means you can't really buy assets so let's get up to seven streams of income ladies and gentlemen let's keep putting in the work so again keep your head up keep moving and i'm out